it's a good idea to get the functions on the same side, right? Right. So uh, let's go ahead and subtract the cosine of theta. Well, again, if you're dividing, then that means you're assuming you're multiplying cosine times theta. That's not what cosine is. It's the cosine of theta. It's not cosine times theta, right? It's cosine of theta. It's like a square root, correct? Okay. Kind of. Not, I mean, not like when we say it, that's what it's like. It's square root of, cosine of, right? Um, so you subtract the cosine of theta. And now I have cosine of 2 theta minus cosine of theta equals 0. Now the problem is, let's combine these. But again, it's kind of like the way I think about this one is kind of like radicals. These are not the same terms. You can't just like combine these, right? You can only combine radicals, guys, when you have the radicands are exactly the same. You can only combine trigonometric functions um, when the argument 2 theta and theta is the same. They're not the same, so you can't combine them. So now we're kind of stuck. It's like, what do we do? We can't, if we get rid of cosine, like on both sides, that doesn't help us. When we get them to the same side, we can't combine them. So now we have a whole, what we have now entered is a whole nother list of problems we can do. You can see we have, well, we have the double angle formulas. So for cosine, there's actually three of them that um, we have listed. And to determine which one is going to be the right one, it's kind of difficult. You don't really always know which one to use. What my recommendation is usually to try one, see if it helps you out. If it starts getting a little difficult, erase it and try another one. With practice, you'll start to see which one, when to use which ones and when to not use which ones. But I can't tell you um, like every time when to do it. I can just tell you like usually, um, usually it's helpful is to always put things in the same terms. So since this is already a cosine, I'm going to want to keep this in terms of cosines. I don't want to add a sine into this equation. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 cosine squared of theta. Um, what is it, minus 1? Minus 1 minus cosine of theta. Does anybody recognize anything there? Yeah? What does that look like? It kind of looks like a trinomial, doesn't it? Like if I was going to say cosine of theta equals x, then I could write that as x, I'm sorry, 2x squared minus x, um, I'm sorry. Just rearrange it a little bit. Right? It's just a quadratic. Or it's a trinomial. We love factoring trinomials, right? Sad. Yay. So, Let's do it with the x's because we know that the x's are going to be easier than with the cosines, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? So how did you like, break it up to mean that there's no place in between these terms? I just used the double angle formula. This is written on the board. It's in u's instead of thetas. But cosine of 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared of theta minus 1. It's the middle, middle equation. Oh. There's three different ones. So I chose the middle oh. one. Right, and we're going to do different examples okay. of each one. Okay, does that help answer? Yeah. So now let's factor this. Now again, guys, we need to know how to do this. This is not like, come on, guys. Remember algebra one? Like this is, we're past, we're past our expiration date on this stuff, guys. Trinomials can be rewritten as a product of two factors. I multiply to give me a negative one, so that's plus and minus negative. That's plus or minus one are my factors. The Middle product is a negative, so that means the larger of my two products needs to be negative. So there you go. If you guys want to check my work, check my work. But that is the factored form. So now let's just rewrite this with cosines. So we look like this. Since we're a little short on time, I am going to apply the zero product property and then solve for cosine of theta. All right. So therefore, I can set each one of these equal to 0 and then isolate the cosine of theta. And then now, we just need to solve. And now, this is much easier. We're used to this, right? Again, if you don't know your unit circle, you're going to start being left behind, guys. So I'm going to solve these. A cosine is negative in the second and the third quadrant. Um, so that's negative 1 half. So that's going to be 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. Cosine is equal to 1 at 0. And 
Should I include 2 pi? No. No, because 2 pi is not included, right? So just include 0. And again, guys, I'm getting these answers based off of the unit circle. Anybody have any questions?